الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Magic, my brothers and sisters, is a topic that everyone wants to listen to. And those who engage in black magic participate in it, and those who are accused of it, all this makes up a very, very interesting topic. Allah addresses this matter in the Quran, and we will never achieve contentment unless we speak about it and we take heed. Number one, to engage in magic is totally prohibited. To visit someone who is going to do the magic is actually losing your faith in Allah, is actually coming out of the fold of Islam, is disbelieving in whatever Muhammad has brought. So it is prohibited to cast a spell or to go to someone to cast a spell. But these things do exist according to the Quran. However, we protect ourselves from it by reading Ayatul Kursi thrice every morning and evening, by reading the last three surahs of the Quran every morning and evening, by seeking the protection in Allah from these evil things three times every morning and evening and perhaps after every prayer. So my brothers and sisters, protect yourself. If you don't, you will be affected. Many have been affected. There are some who go to one extreme and they say this doesn't exist. And there are others who go to the other extreme and they cast the spells. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the middle path where we know it exists, but we will never ever abuse or use in any way that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the same time, we will protect ourselves and we will ask Allah to cure us and we will definitely seek the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in Surah Al-Shu'ara, where Allah makes mention of the poets, towards the end, Allah speaks about the shayateen, the devils. And these devils who keep coming to people telling them something. So a person says, I have a jinn that comes to me and I know your future. They don't know the future, they could know the past. Because with every person, there is a qareen. The qareen is a devil that tries to deviate the person. He is a little shaytan. The Prophet ﷺ did not have one because he became a Muslim. That's the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. However, it's very easy for someone to get another jinn to speak to this jinn that is with you and find out every single detail about your life from the beginning right to the point where you are at right now because this jinn has a memory that will definitely be stronger than ours. So therefore, they will give you details and intimidate you with a little bit of the past. They'll tell you the truth that no one knows besides Allah and you. But the jinn kind, the qareen who's been with you from the point of birth, definitely knows everything up to this point, but doesn't know the future. So what they do, they'll tell you about something, you will be shocked. And sometimes these people appear with big beards or appear to be pious outwardly. It's dangerous. You will hear things from them thinking, wow, they're so pious. They knew what I was thinking. They knew what I was doing. They knew the past. They knew what I did five years ago. They could tell me my passport number 20 years ago and so on. They're so pious. It's not piety. It is actually a devil. The Qareen is giving them information as simple as this and that information is now being translated to you or transferred to you and you're getting excited saying that this person knows and they're pious but you haven't read the Quran. You haven't understood what Allah's telling you. Allah's telling you, do you know what? They lie, 99 lies and then they give you one little truth that's there and, and these, these truths that they give you, they're subhanAllah controlling you by the little truth that they're telling you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Don't be deceived. Then they come and tell you a little bit of what they pretend is your future. I'm going to tell you the future, subhanAllah. I remember a brother who was met by one of these people who was giving them a little bit of information about the past and says, I can tell you the future, but you must pay me $5. And he said, if you knew the future, you would have known that I'm not going to even pay you the $5. Well, wow. may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May Allah protect us all. So remember, don't engage in it, number one. Number two, what type of people do these devils attack? When someone casts a spell on you, they won't be able to harm you. 
if you were protected by reading the Quran, by reading the passages that Allah told you to read, by fulfilling your salah, by dressing appropriately, by abstaining from haram, that which is forbidden, by uh, not engaging or partaking of intoxicants, not engaging in that which is dirty and filthy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Shu'ara, verse number 222. Should we tell you whom these devils affect and whom they come down to? They come down to all those who are liars and those who are sinful people, dirty, filthy people. That's whom the devil comes to and that's whom the devil affects. So people who have control of some of the jinn kind, they have to have done something really nasty in order to get that control. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. Allah says, Afakin Afim, the person who's very, very far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know what? If you're close to Allah, it won't affect you except perhaps that which Allah wills. When you read your Mu'awwidat, the last three surahs of the Quran, the last two are called al Mu'awwidatain. If you read them, Allah will protect you. Allah will grant you that protection. Be convinced, Allah is more powerful. Shaitan and the devil is actually frightened of you. But because we become frightened of it, it gives him power. It gives him this false sense of power over us. But in fact, he is very, very weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells that to us as well. And then comes the issue of ruqya. Ruqya means to actually protect yourself. What I told you now is part of the ruqya. What I told you to read is part of the ruqya. You need to read, protect yourself. You need to save yourself. The water of Zamzam has power in it. The Ajwa dates have power in them. The honey, raw honey has a certain shifa in it. Allah speaks about it in the Quran. The black seed and its oil, which is legit and which is proper genuine stuff has cure in it. Allah speaks about various other things that have cure in them. Subhanallah, it is important for us to increase this in our diet wherever possible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us. Thereafter, the verses of the Quran have contentment in them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O people, I have sent down to you these verses that have cure in them, and they have a reminder for you in them. You will not achieve cure unless you consider the Quran a reminder for yourself. But still by the will of Allah, these verses when they are recited, Allah will grant you that calmness, that protection, the cure from the diseases that you are facing. So my brothers and sisters, another very, very interesting factor is, when you accuse people falsely of engaging in magic, you are worse than them. Many people go to these so-called religious men, sometimes spiritual men, and this man comes up or this woman comes up and says, I know who did black magic on you. It is your aunt. It is your mother-in-law. It is your sister. It is your sister's husband. It is someone else. It is your own mother. They are lying. No matter what, they are lying. They are taking a chance. Even if they say, I have the signs, I was told, I know. They got the information from the devil. The devil was lying to them and the devil's intention is to split your family and you're doing it and you become worse than them because you falsely accused them. Do not accuse people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. As guilty as they may seem, you don't accuse them. Unless you have personally seen them going to a person who casts spells or seen them trying to cast a spell through whatever means, like sometimes they use, for example, voodoo dolls, etc. If you've seen this happening, it's a different scenario. But we're talking about listening to a person who claims to be spiritual and he tells you who did it and that's it. And they may even show you a face. Na'udhu billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. This is a topic that might scare some of you. But remember, it, it does exist. However, the stronger you are in your relationship with Allah, the less it would affect you. In fact, it would not affect you at all. We're all on earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard every one of us. My brothers and sisters, this is why Allah says, just before that, He says something powerful, reminding us. People might get scared. What should I do? Verse number 217. 
وتوكل على العزيز الرحيم الذي يراك حين تقوم lay your trust in al aziz ar rahim the most powerful the most merciful these two words these two names of allah are amazing in this place allah says lay your trust don't worry about all this magic and everything else for as long as you are trying to get close to allah for as long as you read your muawwidat on a daily basis for as long as you've done what you believe you're supposed to be doing you're not an evil dirty person you don't need to worry you lay your trust on the one who is all powerful and he is all merciful those two will protect you those two qualities of allah will protect you that is allah allah alone will grant you the help May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that help. And you know what Allah says? الَّذِي يَرَاكَ حِينَ تَقُومُ The one who watches you when you awaken. The one who watches you when you awaken. He is Allah. He will protect you. Lay your trust in Allah. When you lay your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He definitely will protect you. He will guide you and He will grant you goodness. My brothers and sisters, there are some people who will tell you, okay, now that you've been affected, yes, you need something to be done on you. All you need is the Qur'an to be recited on you. Yes, indeed. If the dua is taken from the Qur'an and from the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and what is to be done was taught by Allah and His Messenger, then, then that is good, that is okay. But if they are to do things that are absurd and to ask you to do things that are crazy, you're not allowed to do these things. Some would ask you to remove your clothing and go somewhere and to go and, you know, buy up 80 different types of fruit and lemon and to get roses of different colors and join their petals. They're making a mockery of you. They're actually laughing at you. Shaitan wants you to do all sorts of silly things to entrap you in a different way, to create a distance between you and Allah. What contentment do you want, my brothers and sisters, when you are fooling yourself? You will never achieve contentment except through the owner of contentment. May Allah grant us that contentment. And may Allah grant us a powerful lesson. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Al-lazheena amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikri allahi ala bi dhikri allahi tatma'innu al-qulub.